Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's do a complete beginner's guide to Subnautica here in 2023 with the Live and Large update released. I'm going to play the game on PS5, and I beat this game completely before this update came out, and I thought, this is such a fantastic game, let's do a guide for new players and also have the new content with the Living Large update, the quality of life features, some of the other uh, bits and bobs that they've put into the game with this update so that if you're returning to the game, you can see what changes are present. So we're going to do a guide here that starts a brand new game from scratch in Subnautica and I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm not going to tell you the fastest path to rush to do this or tell you about endgame decisions. I'm going to simply explain to you the controls, the concepts of the game, so that you can survive early on, get a few tips and tricks to better survive, and also understand exactly how to best enjoy this game and even see if this is the kind of game that you might want to play. It is, in my opinion, a phenomenal game. It's available for now just about every platform that there is. So now it seems to be as good a time as any to dive in and take a look, quite literally dive in. So let's take a look. I'm going to select play and we're going to start a brand new game. Now, I'm going to be playing on survival mode. Okay, so you have some choices here. You can choose survival, freedom, hardcore, or creative. Very similar, I suppose, to like Minecraft choices. Survival is the base game experience. Um, freedom is uh, a little bit more of a casual approach if you don't want to have to worry about eating or drinking. Um, hardcore mode gives you only one life, which is very brutal if this is your first time playing because dying can easily happen, drowning can easily happen, and creative is if you just don't want any kind of challenge and just explore the game itself. So because I'm assuming that this is your first time or we're going to play it like it's our first time and do a default Subnautica experience, we're going to choose survival, which means we have to worry about eating, drinking, and our oxygen as well as our health okay so we have a lot of concerns to manage as you would expect in a survival game and let's jump in look it's our spaceship that is the spaceship that we were on and as you can see things are going badly for that particular ship as it crashes and you start the game and it says push any button to continue and we will. Things aren't going so well for us in the escape pod. And we've just been knocked out. That doesn't feel so good. And our pod's on fire. Alright. So you start in pretty dire circumstances. Okay. And the first thing we want to do immediately is just look down and pick up this fire extinguisher. So I'm going to push X to pick it up, and we immediately equip the fire extinguisher. You can see me holding it in my right hand, and I'm going to, as they say, use R2, the trigger, to kind of put out this fire. I'm just going to aim at anything that's on fire, and keep it going. That's not enough. Keep going till the music calms down, and you're good. Our PDA is booting up. You have suffered minor head trauma. This is considered an optimal outcome. Optimal. The PDA has now rebooted in emergency mode with one directive to keep you alive on an alien world. Please. 
please refer to the data bank for detailed survival advice. Good luck. All right. So, um, now that we are into the game and we've passed the opening cinematic, we picked up that fire extinguisher and we put out the fire. Now things have calmed down enough so that we can discuss what's going on. So the first thing you want to know is that we've picked up this PDA, our personal digital assistant, and you can see us holding it up to our face so we can see the options. The game is telling us with the tutorial that if we push the options button, we can open or close the PDA. Now, of course, my controls are going to reflect the fact that I'm playing on PS5, but your controls for your game will be calibrated for Switch, Xbox, PC, whatever you're playing this game on. So I don't want to close my PDA right now, but I do want to dismiss this tutorial, so I am going to close my PDA just to get that out of the way. And you can see that there in the middle of your screen, in the upper middle, there is this kind of tutorial box that's telling you some of the controls as you learn. So what it's telling me right now is that I can push left and right on the directional pad to move between my quick slots, which are at the bottom of the screen. So right now I currently have five quick slots available, but I'm only using one, which is for my fire extinguisher, which you can see I'm still holding in my right hand. Now, if I were to push right on the directional pad, I put the fire extinguisher away and I would select something else, but there is nothing else. So if I want to get that fire extinguisher back, I can just push left on the directional pad to get it back or push right to just kind of put that away. All right. Now, before I go back to the PDA, because that's going to be our home base for a moment, I want to just talk about the UI. So in the lower left, you're going to see your gauges, which reflect your vitals. These are the numbers that and the wheels that you need to keep as full as possible so that you don't die in this survival experience. If you've ever played a survival crafting exploration type game, okay, then you will be very familiar with this. But if not, basically, we're going to be playing a game where um, our objective is to escape these dire circumstances our ship has crash landed and we're you know uh well it hasn't really crash landed there wasn't much landing or success going on as you'll see but the ship is in a very bad position and we're in escape pod and we're trying to get out of here and just make the best of it but in order to do that we need to survive long enough to figure out how we would even make something like that possible okay so we need to keep these bars full and these bars wrap around in a wheel on each of our statistics. The big green one in the upper right is our O2, our oxygen. And this is going to be the one that is honestly the sneakiest. It, it might not seem like it and the game will warn you, but um, very often running out of oxygen will be the cause of your demise. So you always want to check that O2 and keep it as full as you can or be aware that as you're depleting it you might want to consider getting oxygen as fast as you can to fill it back up by going back to the surface or um, using other technologies to boost your O2. Now in the upper left wheel you see the heart surrounded by um, the red bar that is a health indicator. The apple, the yellow wheel is our satiety or our food indicator and the drop with the blue wheel is our hydration or our water so we've got to keep all of those going now at the top center okay you'll see something that says power and it says 75 out of 75 what we're talking about with power is the energy level of this escape pod that we're in okay so it's just telling us how much energy this baby has right now, and it's at full. The zero meters indicator, okay, the M is meters. This is our depth. Right now, we are not deep. We are not under the water. We are floating on the surface, all right? So I'm going to push the uh, center button on my controller 
to get my PDA back because I want to talk to you about this. This baby is incredibly useful, okay? So we're going to look at our PDA and currently when I open the PDA, it defaults to our inventory and equipment screen. So in the left, all these boxes over here um, are my inventory, okay? And on the right, with the kind of paper doll, are the items that I have equipped. I currently have nothing equipped. Th this doesn't mean that I'm naked. This just means that I don't have any enhancements to any of the basic gear that you begin the game with, okay? So you can um, craft, for example, better goggles, a better swimming suit, better swimming fins, s gloves, um, better oxygen tanks, things like that to equip. Now, in my inventory, all I'm carrying currently is a fire extinguisher. Items do not have weight in this game, okay? So you don't have to worry about how much things weigh in terms of encumbrance, but they have a size that they take up in your inventory where you get to play kind of like inventory Tetris and manage, you know, some items which might take up two, four, six, nine squares in the inventory and make choices about what you pick up, okay? Now, if I use the bumpers, left one and R1, I'm going to toggle between different tabs of our PDA, okay? And I can use the left stick to change what I'm looking at. These are my current blueprints, okay? These are things that we can, we currently know how to craft or fabricate, okay? And we are going to be learning new recipes and blueprints as we play, okay? But this is what we start out knowing. The PDA itself kind of is incredibly intelligent and has this um, AI that's designed to help us survive. And so similar to, you know, other survival games, if you've played Ark Survival or if you've played Valheim or something, what happens is when you discover new things in the environment, you are potentially going to learn new blueprints that you can use to craft. So one of the main objectives in the game is to explore as much as we can to find new resources, which we can then use to make new items to make ourselves stronger, better able to survive and explore. Okay? Um... And you can go down on this to, to get a sense of all of the different things that we can make. All right. Now, if I move, uh, we're going to look more at this later, of course. But right now, um, these are just certain recipes. Like, so, for example, well, water looks really important. How do we make that? Right. Um, and we'll learn more of these as we go. Now, you can pin something if you want. So, if I want to, like, um, pin... Uh, bleach, for example, as a recipe, and I push X, then it will go onto the screen and will ri remind me of like exactly what kinds of ingredients I need to collect to be able to fabricate bleach. If I push the triangle button, I will unpin that. Now I'm going to push right one and go over here. These are our current beacons. So these are, um, right now, the only beacon that we have is our life pod or our escape pod. What this means is that if I'm exploring and I'm looking around, I will see my life pod icon appear so that I can get back here because you're going to want to get back here all the time to survive. All right. Now you can toggle this on or off by selecting pushing X on this eyeball icon. If it's not glowing, okay, the eyeball turns off. That means that you will not be alerted to where the life pod is. I recommend highly that you keep this on. Now another thing you can do is if you increase the local radiation levels. Trend is consistent with damage to the Aurora drive core sustained during planet fall. Okay. So you're going to hear uh, robotic female voices speak to you either from your PDA or from uh, your vehicles. And they will tell you important information if you're lingering to kind of help clue you in. And what they're saying right now is that there's a bunch of radiation that's been detected that's consistent with um, the Aurora, which is the ship that we were on, that giant ship we saw in the loading screen that we saw exploding. 
And basically what they're communicating is like, if the reactor on the Aurora were to break in some catastrophe, it would leak radiation everywhere. And we're kind of getting the feel that that's what's going on. Now, to move back to the life pod, you can also go over here with either the left stick or the directional pad and change the color of how it appears, okay? So you could change it to something like yellow, for example, to make it even more visible if you want it to stand out from other icons. Now, I'm going to push right one again, and this just goes to any screenshots that we've taken. And I'm going to push it again, okay? And you heard her just talk about increased local radiation levels. This is the log. If you come to the log, you can listen to or read any announcement that's been made by the game if you want to re-immerse yourself in the lore or you missed something or you're looking for clues come to the log to get that information okay so this is the first message that we got and this is the one that we just got recently okay um now we're getting we're getting automatic alerts okay so the game is telling us that we need to eat something I'm standing here talking to you, which you won't do when you boot up the game, and time is passing. Something you want to be aware of in this game is that time is always passing, so there is a sense of urgency to your actions in the sense that you want to make sure your oxygen and your food and your hydration are all um, moving in the right direction, because even as you see, my satiety is ticking down, all right? And then finally, if I go over here, I have a data bank, which I can use um, and open up. And I can get all sorts of, for example, the two birth emergency life pod. This is what I'm in right now. I can get all sorts of really cool lore and information about things in the game that I'm getting introduced to. And if you, the story in this game is phenomenal. It is a magnificent story it's a very cool science fiction story and if you want to get more out of the story than just the plot points that the game provides i highly recommend reading everything in the data bank it just really brings it all together and makes the experience more rich and engaging in this tutorial i'm not going to read through it um, for the sake of brevity but i really recommend on your own checking this out and come back to the PDA whenever you're having any difficulty because it's basically like the in-game instruction manual or quest log or whatever you want to call it that gives you just all of the resources that you might need to figure things out if you're lost. And I'm going to push circle to just close that. Okay. Now what they're telling us is that if I want to use the fabricator, if I push X on this, okay, the fabricator opens up, and this is our crafting station. So we begin the game able to craft a bunch, all right? Now, I could try to craft resources, and if you push X, this will open up. You can push circle to go back. I could try to craft some water, for example, but you'll notice how all of these different buttons are gray. That means I can't actually make anything with the ingredients that I have. I don't have the right stuff to craft anything, I need to go get that. So when I do have that stuff, the, these will turn blue to indicate that something in one of these menus can actually be created, all right? So I'm just gonna push circle to close all of this. And I'm gonna look around, I'm using the right stick to navigate, and you'll see that in the center of the screen there's like a targeting reticule, and if I aim that at something, then information will pop up about how I can interact with it. This is the radio. But it's broken. A lot of the stuff in here has been broken by the impact. But let me show you what's not broken. First things first, come over here to the medical kit fabricator, open this up, and take out this first aid kit. So you open it with X, and you take that out with X. And then if I open my PDA, you can see that I have a first aid kit now in my inventory. This gives me 50 health if I use it. Right now I have 100 maximum health and I'm at 81 which is fine I don't need to use this but if I get hurt I can use this and I can only use this from here I cannot put this on my hotbar or anything you're going to need to open up your inventory to um, use a first aid kit okay now you'll see my food keeps dwindling so how am I going to eat well here's how you're going to eat go right here to your storage container and push x on it and there's emergency supplies inside the escape pod or the life pod. There's some water right here. 
So when you're looking at this screen, on the left is our inventory, and on the right is this storage inventory. You can see as I'm moving the cursor around using the directional pad on the right, there are flares, there's filtered water, there are nutrient blocks. These nutrient blocks provide food plus 75, and this is what we can eat, okay, to um, recover our... Emergency. Starvation imminent. Uh, Yep. I mean, you can see our we're going to starve if we don't eat. All right. So I'm going to take out a nutrient block and some water and I'm going to leave everything else in here. But I want to just say, I think that you should also remember that this storage can be used to put things if you want as an additional um, expansion of your inventory. So always remember to come back here. And the first time I played this, I didn't even know that you could open this, but it's great for getting food. All right. Now, these are the power cells that are providing energy to the pod, and they're solar powered. So this is why it does have electricity. Everything else is broken. All right. So I'm going to go into my inventory, and I'm just going to select this food. I open the PDF, PDA rather, using my center button, and I'm just going to push X to eat the food. And you can Vital see immediately my health wheel filled up to 83 all right and i'm going to drink this water by pushing x on it and my water went up to 50 or my hydration level went up to 50. now if you were playing the game and not talking like i'm doing and just standing here i would recommend against eating these as much as you can I think you want to save these nutrient blocks and this filtered water as much as you possibly can. Treat them as valuable resources. I'm just eating them to show you how you eat and drink and how they change your bars. And also because I'm talking, I'm not out getting stuff that we need. So let's do that now. We're going to climb the ladder by pushing X. And we're going to open up our life pod and stand. And oh my goodness. Wow. So this is your, like, oh my goodness moment in this game. Where you come out of your life pod, and this is what immediately drew me to the game. Look what's going on here. This is the ship we were on. It's on fire. It's in the ocean. It's not doing well. And if I use my directional stick to look around... Okay, there's something floating over there. Notice the horizon. In every direction, there is nothing, clouds, and back to the aurora. So, we're on a water world, it looks like. And um, what a terrifying place to arrive if we need to survive. Up in the sky, look at that. It's a giant moon floating by. This is a beautiful game. It really is. There's some life forms flying up in the sky. And... Um, you can look down at your feet. I've got these real basic flippers on. It is time to go for a swim and start gathering resources. Look at that fish just jumping right out of the water. So I'm going to just use my um, left stick to walk forward and splash down. And look, the screen turns into goggles as I am under the water. Four meters now under the water as I can see by the indicator in the upper center of my screen. And I am taking a gander all around me at this beautiful underwater world. Okay? So, as I look, check out how amazing it is. But most importantly, check out my O2. Look at that sinking. You see, I have 15, 12. It's starting to pulse. Use your stick to move looking upward and go to the surface to get your oxygen back. And then just look back down and use the directional pad to walk down or swim down again. Now what you want to do is just look around and see what you can interact with. So for example, I can pick up this metal salvage. I can pick up these acid mushrooms. Whenever I can interact with something, my targeting reticule will turn into perhaps a hand icon with an X, meaning I can pick that up. That goes for fish as well. Okay, I just got that fish. 
fish are difficult sometimes to catch. You gotta swim right at them Oxygen. and jam the X button to try to pick them up. And I'm just gonna swim up, get my oxygen back. You heard the PDA AI voice indicate oxygen when I'm really low. But if you're too low and you hear that warning, it's not gonna be fast enough for you to uh, remedy the situation. As long as you're up here, your oxygen will not deplete. You can breathe the air on this world mercifully. Now let's look in our inventory. Everything in our inventory that in the upper right corner has a badge on it with that plus sign meant that I just acquired it and it's new. So let's look around. We've got metal salvage. Notice that this takes up two by two boxes in our inventory. I picked up acid mushrooms and I picked up two different kinds of fish, a boomerang and a peeper. So if you look at these, okay, peepers give you 12 food as I'm looking at the tooltip for them, but they take away seven H2O or seven water. So they make you thirsty when you eat them. Boomerangs are not as good at giving you food and they make you less thirsty as a reflection. So peepers are the ones that we really want if we want to eat. These are the fish right now that we can get that are just fantastic to catch and eat. Okay? And um, while we... I'm, look, I'm holding it. So my fish have gone into my hot bar. And I can hold them out if I want to, but I don't want to. While we have stuff um, and our food is okay, I'm not going to eat anything right now. You can eat the fish raw. But we're better served going back to the fabricator and cooking the fish, okay? But right now, I want you to just enjoy the game and practice fishing, hand fishing. This is a really hard thing to do um, at first, and you just are going to have a lot of failures. I still have a lot of failures. But re be rest assured, like, when we get better, um, there's table, table coral, but we can't get it right now because we don't have... Um, the right stuff and our oxygen has depleted so for right now with our oxygen being so low I want you to just kind of stay really close to the surface and just see what's around always keeping your life pod in view or at least close by I'm gonna pick up this um, metal salvage okay and I'm just gonna kind of explore we can swim through this giant coral tube and just see what's out here but boy it is deep and notice that you see the life pod I'm looking at it there is the indicator that we've set for our beacon and I'm going to now show you that you can actually enter the escape pod from underneath as well so you can climb up the ladder and jump out the top or you can board the escape pod by going from the bottom and you can do that by looking at this hatch at the bottom from within it and just go out the bottom if you want or you can climb the ladder and go to the top okay now every time you get stuff all right it's worth your while to come to the fabricator and see what you can create we can now make resources i'm going to click on this and we can make basic materials because you can see that this is highlighted and we can make titanium. So we can get titanium from the fabricator. The fabricator can basically take things and turn it into something else. So we can break things down with it. We can com create combined components to make things with it. I'm going to make titanium with the pieces of metal salvage that have broken off from the Aurora that we have found. I'm just gonna push X. You see the laser is working and we get four pieces each. You see the kind of pieces of titanium emerge from the fabricator and then shrink and shoot into our inventory. And I'm going to do the other one as well. Okay, you have to do these bit by bit. Now we have eight titanium in our inventory. I'm going to go to sustenance. I'm going to go to cooked food. And I'm going to show you that we can make a cooked peeper or a cooked boomerang. All right, I'm going to cook the peeper. Okay. And I'm gonna. Uh huh. Fantastic. And I'm gonna cook the other peeper that we got. And I'm gonna cook the boomerang. Beautiful. Now, I'm not gonna cook this other boomerang for a moment. I'm gonna go to personal and equipment and look. Continuing. 
So this game can be hilarious, by the way, okay? One of the things that's so great about the game is that it has a very dire sense of humor. Right now they're telling you that the ship can explode and quantumly detonate, which would presumably vaporize us. So yeah, we probably need to monitor that. Now, we got enough titanium so that we can make an O2 tank, and I've just gone to personal equipment we can make a fire extinguisher. We do not need it. We only have one. We can make a pipe. We do not need these right now. This is for when we're building a base, okay? And we can make a floating air pump for pipes. These are for when we're trying to make a, a larger base um, when we get way further into the game than just this escape pod. We don't need these right now. I don't mean to spoil that for you. This is a traditional crafting game where you're going to be, you know, making a base and upgrading it along with your equipment. But I just want to tell you that right now so that you don't waste resources on pipes and floating air pumps. But I do want to make this O2 tank immediately, okay? So I'm going to make an O2 tank. And you can see new blueprint synthesized. We can make a high capacity tank okay and i'm going to go into deployables and i'm going to show you that we can also make a locker which is um something that we can put even in the ocean uh well actually only in the ocean and float it around and it'll hold our stuff for us okay i'm going to push circle and close this i'm going to go into our pda immediately just to show you what we've got now notice that i've cooked these boomerang okay i've cooked these peepers but you know you see how now that i've cooked them on the right, there is a bar that's indicating to you how long this is going to stay fresh. If you cook them, okay, like look at this boomerang. It gives you eight food and takes away three H2O, but the cooked boomerang gives you 19 food and actually gives you H2O, as does the cooked peeper. It doesn't make you thirsty. It gives you food and water, but the consequence is it only stays fresh for a little bit. If you don't cook it, it will never go bad so only cook what you need and by cook i mean use the fabricator okay i'm going to um it's already turned old you see how there's an adjective in front of cooked saying this is the old cooked boomerang i'm actually going to eat this okay and i'm going to overkill uh, no i don't need to eat it right now but you see my h2o is running out now, these acid mushrooms, I picked up a few of these, but I don't want you to pick up too many. They don't do anything good. They're not something that we need right now. Um, so I'm going to actually go over to our storage, and I'm going to dump in these mushrooms, and I'm going to dump in this boomerang that we didn't cook yet, and put in some titanium as well. Only the things that we need to carry around is what I'm going to take. Now you'll notice um, I've got another fabricator. You see this bar right here? It says 1%, this circle wheel. This is telling you that the ship is creating medical kit fabric. It's, it's fabricating medical kits for you automatically over time. So always come back to check on this to pick up a free medical kit because these are great and if you get extras, just put them into your storage, all right? But you'll notice that we're running low on water. Our water is becoming a problem. So we need to start figuring out some kind of solution to that. Now, it is night. Look at this, look how cool this is. We are in the water and it is nighttime, all right? Um, and we need to figure out how to drink, okay? So we're gonna just do some fishing like we have been. Toxic fluid intake immediately. And it wants us to intake fluid, but we don't have any fluid, so what are we going to do, okay? I'm going to go back into the ship, and I'm going to get some fluid here, okay? And I'm going to take this over. Now, you won't need to do what I'm doing right now, okay, to get your fluid, but... You need to know how to do it. By the way, the other thing I want to tell you is when we made this O2 tank, it immediately got equipped, okay? And you'll see that on this O2 tank, okay, um, it tells us how much oxygen tank that we have, but also, let me look right here. I have 75 oxygen. 
So I went from 45 to 75 just by making that. I've nearly doubled the amount of time that I can stay underwater. Okay, I'm going to drink this water just so that they're not bothering us about water. But what's important is we're going to go to our PDA and we're going to look over here at blueprints and we're going to say, okay, I need water. How do I make water? If you're ever wanting something, go to your PDA and look at your blueprints. I need to um, get bleach to basically create disinfected water, okay? So how do I get bleach? I get bleach by getting salt and coral tube samples, okay? I cannot get a coral tube sample, okay, until I get myself um, a tool which we want, and it's going to be the survival knife, okay? So what you need to do is start thinking about trying to build tools for yourself, like a flashlight would be awesome. And if you want anything in this game, just look at what you can make, see if it would help you, and see what you need to make it. But really what you want to do is just try to gather as many resources as you can. I'm going to go ahead and cook this peeper. And let's go back in because I want to show you another thing that you can do. I'm just swimming around looking at everything and... Got a peeper. Good. Okay. Those big guys with the yellow tails, you don't want to swim near them. They'll yell at you. They don't eat you, but what they do, unfortunately, is um, they will release a, a stinky kind of gas cloud that does damage to you. So try to stay away from those guys. Now, as long as you stay near your ship and you watch your O2, you're going to be okay. Um, and the enemies aren't going to be too hostile. But if you go too far away or too deep, you're going to start to run into problems, okay? So I'm going to... Do, 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 do. Swim to the surface. And... And we're going to go in, and I'm going to show you. Look what we just got. We caught a bladder fish, okay? Um, unique outer membrane has potential as a natural water filter. What does that mean? That means if we go to the fabricator, okay, and we go to resources, we can get filtered water from bladder fish. We didn't know that until we caught one, okay? So this is going to be the easiest way for us to drink until we get that survival knife. Um, and I don't need to cook these right now, but I'm going to just close this and check this out. We just got 20 H2O from Bladderfish. So vital you can... Signs stabilizing. So this helps us tremendously, but watch this. Look at this. The cooked boomerang, now it takes H2O from us and because it's become old. So once they get old, they lower in quality. Look at the cooked peeper compared to the old cooked peeper, all right? So I'm going to um, eat this before it goes completely bad. And this is why you might want to just hold off on cooking things until you need them. So I'm going to dump a bunch of fish that aren't cooked in here for now, all right? And now we've got a great objective, which is getting water from bladderfish. It's daytime, okay? Time passes pretty fast in this game. And you can see the sun is out. And now what we're looking for are those beautiful pink and purpley flowy bladderfish right there. There's one. So again, it's not going to be easy to catch these things sometimes. Got it? Oh no, I didn't get it. I lied. I got a screenshot. There's one. But these are what we want. We want water. Break limestone, it's telling us, okay? So if you go over here to this limestone outcropping, you can break it with your hand and get resources. So there are some rock outcroppings that you can get and break with your hand, and that's fine. But right now, what I think you want to be doing, look at all these beautiful bladderfish. All right, we got to watch our O2. Let's swim to the surface. 
is just getting yourself bladder fish so you can have enough water to drink. Okay. Pick up this metal salvage so we can craft some stuff. Um, this is a creature egg. You do not need this. Okay, right now. And look at this. Uh, I'm going to take the peeper, but I'm going to take this, which is quartz. Okay, another resource. And your objective, look at all this quartz in here, is to just gather resources and see if you unlock recipes. We were about to die of uh, dehydration until we figured out that bladderfish were our secret and for getting us water. But we wouldn't have figured that out if we didn't gather them and learn that recipe. So this is a game where the loop is like this. Explore. Look at everything. Try to interact with as many things as you can. Craft everything that you can and see if it unlocks new things for you to craft. If I turn around, you can just see eventually in your field of vision your pinned icon, your beacon. And you see how if I um, look at it, it becomes larger and it tells me how far away it is. It's 57 meters away. So it shrinks down, but if I look at it, it gets bigger and tells me. Now, later, if we get compass technology, then we will be able to tell north, south, east, and west and some more useful stuff. Um, but right now, I cannot. Okay. And I'm going to go here and get into the pod itself and now we need fluid so we're going to go to sustenance we're going to go to water and look at this i can make a ton of water and by the way when you make filtered water it does not go bad okay so you can make yourself filter as many filtered water as you want and you don't have to worry about it um having a shelf life like your food does all right so now if i go into my um i've got one two three four and I almost have full hydration. And there's no reason to not go to full hydration, by the way. Um, it, it just means you have to worry about it less right now. And I'm going to go ahead and make some titanium from the metal salvage. That's all you can do with it, by the way, is break it down. But look at this. I can also make glass because I picked up two, two quartz. So the quartz that I picked up, I can use it to make glass. Okay? And in doing so... Um, I can now go ahead and I can make another O2 tank, which I don't want. But if I want a high-capacity O2 tank, all I need is my standard tank and one more glass and a silver ore. You can see that what I have in terms of the ingredients for the item is in green. I have four titanium, but I need one more glass. In parentheses, under glass times two, it says I have one out of the two that I need. A standard Odoo tank, which I have equipped, um, so I either need to make another one or take off the one that I'm wearing, and I need to get some silver ore, all right? And um, I can make a locker, but right now, I'm just thrilled that we've solved our water problem, we know how to fish and get food, and we're going to continue exploring so that we can fix up this pond, we can increase our survival chance, and figure out what's going on. Where is everybody else? What's happening? Are there other survivors? Is there land that we can walk on? Where are we? All of these questions we will get better um, understanding of as we get further into the game. But right now, all I'm trying to do is just give you the fundamentals so you can survive long enough to enjoy this wonderful game. Everybody, I think this is a good place to stop this first episode. I hope you're enjoying it. I really hope that... Um, you get into this game and if you have any questions for me about it please put them in the comments below thanks so much for watching everyone take care